Let's do it. Elon Musk's X is worth 71.5% less than when he bought Twitter, says Fidelity. So Fidelity is not like a, you know, a regular uh, company. It's a multi, multi-billion dollar company with a lot of money under management. Here we go. Elon Musk's X, formerly known as Twitter, has lost 71.5% of its value since he bought it, according to Fidelity, one of the company's shareholders, one of the company's shareholders. This decline comes just over a year after Musk acquired Twitter for $44 billion and renamed it to X, with Fidelity estimating its current value at around $12.5 billion, significantly low than Musk's own October estimation of $19 billion. Musk's ownership of X has uh, been marked by controversy with hate speech rising on the platform after his takeover, leading to major advertisers like Disney, Apple, IBM uh, severing ties. Additionally, X recently failed to block a California law acquiring social media companies to disclose their content moderation policy. So, Tom, 71.5% of X has dropped. Why do you think that is? And do you think Elon's really worried about this number? I don't think he's worried about it. I'll tell you why. Elon Musk's X is worth 71% less than when he bought Twitter. Interesting enough, Jeff Bezos' X is also worth 71% less because she's been giving away his fortune. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm the comedian. Uh, Singer! Uh, so, um, uh, but no, Elon Musk saw this coming. He came and he bought this. And when he walked in there... And what was he carrying the first day he walked into Twitter? Uh, it's sink. Kitchen sink. sink. The kitchen sink. I'm here to change. Let that sink in. Yeah. Right? So there we go. So he kind of knew this would happen. But you have to remember, this is a public stock. Stocks go up and down. As soon as, and by the way, Disney, Apple, and IBM, and the th some of the things they're boycotting, in the backdrop in America is DEI kind of getting, you know, get its fingers slammed yep. in the door a little bit, yep. which means some of these advertisers are going to be coming back. And as soon as they come back, is here. But what is happening right now? Is Elon Musk a buy and hold guy when he buys things or is he a builder? He's a builder. He is building functionality. We're seeing it right now. We're seeing things happen. And by the way, Twitter's had outages. There's a thing about an outage this week. But just remember, he is currently running the current Twitter with one third the staff that he did before, and he's building new functionality in it, suffering with some things. But what's going on in the, biz in the background is a stronger Twitter is emerging, and as soon as the corner turns on micro-subscriptions, because he was charging people for the blue check, and he's going to be charging people for other things, and he was a destination for things like uh, a Tucker Carlson show. So there's a lot happening in the background while the pressure is on the stock and the advertisers are away. You know what's going to happen as soon as the advertisers step back mm. and some of these other subscriptions go? All of a sudden, Elon Musk is going to make an announcement and a quarterly report just like he did with tesla now we moved uh, we sold a lot more cars than you thought we did remember those announcements yep, come yep. oh he's got all these trouble and you know you know full self-driving fsd has got problems and he comes out well there may have been problems but we we, we sold thirty thousand more calls than we thought also what happens Tesla is up at 260 or whatever it is, the single most you know, uh, valuable auto stock. I don't think he worries about this. I think he's going to make a comeback on it. But more importantly, right now he's developing and adding things to it. Twitter is getting more valuable from a technology standpoint, not less valuable. So I'll give you uh, a little feedback, Tom, because I agree with you for the most part. It's, it's, it's all about timing. Short term, I think this is a freaking disaster. Imagine you buy a house for a million dollars. Million dollars. A year later, your house is now worth three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Let that sink in for a second. Sink in, Tom. Mm -hmm. So anyone in the short term would be like, "Dude, what the hell is happening here?" Now, long term, I think we all know that he's a visionary. He's a builder. I think he's going to build this thing back up. But let's not pretend that whatever he touches, whatever he does, just automatically turns to gold. Oh. I think we're all fans of Elon. I think we're all seeing what he's doing with X, formerly t known as Twitter. But this is not a good look. Not, not this a good is not a good look. And last point, yeah. there is some precedent here. So you talked about stocks going up, stocks going down. We saw what happened to Meta. Facebook. When Fe Facebook changed their name to Meta, tanked. Tanked. Now they're up as high as ever. But they turned it around, but their business model didn't change, and they weren't telling advertisers to go fuck themselves. So there is some uphill battle here with Elon. I think we all like Elon. Free speech advocate. Free speech absolutist. He's absolutely trolling everybody right now he's feuding with mark cuban i think we all believe in elon but if this was your company this was your house and you were down 70 percent in 14 months 
you'd be very, very weary. I'd be nervous, but I do. You have to. Can I take a step back? I'm not. I don't know about the money. I, I know it's bad, but what he's doing for us as as humanity that we get to see now. Because, dude, if you think about it, if it wasn't for him buying X right now, would you be here? This whole Epstein thing, you would have heard it maybe once on CNN. Fox would have been touching on it, and it would have been gone. Thank God for him, because, bro, he cares about the people t- that we could talk. He, he loves humanity. He wants to give us a forum. And, Adam, do you think he really, I mean, he cares about money, or does he, does he care about humanity? Does he so, care about letting us talk and letting us have these conversations? So you know what he's doing? He's running a 501c3 nonprofit philanthropic organization. God bless you. Yeah. We see that, like— if there's issues on the traditional social media, you know, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Instagram, what have you, mm-hmm. okay, let's go to X. He won't censor that. But if you're trying to make money, which a company is supposed to be doing, you know, they're not doing it. Well, yeah. Sash, you would know this. I mean, X is not a dividend stock. So this isn't Hilton, IBM, AT&T, the classic dividend stocks that used to pay mom and dad. It's a private company. It's not even public anymore, right? Right, you know, and it's, but the day he comes back out, the day he goes, and the day this this all comes back home to roost, you know, is he happy about the value? No. Is the advertisers leaving kind of a pain in the ass? Did he want to get on stage and says, "Hey, Bob Iger and Disney, go, go off"? You know, no, he didn't want to do that. But you know what? My point is, don't dance on his grave. And this thing, I don't pe- think people understand what is coming back. You know, look, and what I keep saying is look at Tesla, look at full self-driving, look at the innovation, look at battery use, look at all the things that you're seeing in Tesla that everybody else is doing. Look, Tesla is making contracts with everybody else to be the gas station for the EVs they sell. So, yeah, real, real dumb guy he is. He's selling razor blades. Everybody else is making razors. And so I, I don't think he's happy about this, but don't dance on his grave, baby. I tell you, I really don't think he gives a shit. That's what I, mean. <clears throat> I really don't think he gives a shit. He's sitting there saying, you guys worry about the stuff. Tell the story. Tell all the stuff that you guys want to talk about. Um, when, when, you, when you trust yourself to know that you're going to deliver and you've done it over and over and over again, your level of confidence is so high that when people second guess you, it's almost like, because he, here's how life works. I had, I had a meeting with you and I had this conversation together in Aspen one of the mornings, right? And I, I showed it to him. I said, look, here's how life works. In life... The first time you cast a vision that you're going to win at the highest level, okay, and you're on your peers, what happens? Like, like Saul is here, he's upstairs, right? Saul, a friend of mine that, yeah. you know, him and I used to sit at Denny's and we would talk, me, him, and another guy, and we would say, I'm like, hey, one day, and one day, one day we're dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. How do you know the other person is real? How do you know the other person's not full of shit? How do you not know that? A lot of people are full of shit, right? Okay. Then you fast forward, then you talk a bigger dream. Then your friends are kind of like, yeah, so you, when are you going to do this now, huh? Look at this idiot. He said, where's your car? Where's your money? And then people start working with you, and then you sell it to them. Then they quit on you. You're not going to pull it off. You're not smart enough. You're not this. You're not You never won. Why would I believe you're capable of doing this? And who's right, by the way? All of those guys are right because you haven't proven to the marketplace. Then it happens. Then those guys call. And some of them lie to your face and they say what? We always knew you were going to make it. Yeah. And those guys call and they say what? Man, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I didn't think we were going to make it. <laughs> Shit, I'm not. Being real. I was actually a hater. And yeah. you know the fact they did it, good for you. But now you go on your next run. And those people now say what? Well, I know he did it before, but dude, there's yeah, no way in the wor- world he's going to do it again. Okay? Now you have to go sell the newer people in your life and some of the people that were in your past life, they're like, no, I believe this guy. So, for example, David Sachs gets a call from Elon. Guess what David says? No, this guy's going to do it. Hey, what do you need, Elon? Boom. And then, So the people that are close to you, your level of reputation, the marketplace, they're going to come through, goes higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. But every single time, whether you like it or not, the second guessing community is going to show up and they're going to keep second guessing you. And that's what Elon's going through right now. And guess what, Elon? The difference for him today, he doesn't have to prove that he's smart. He doesn't have to prove to the world that he's rich. He doesn't have to prove to the world that he's a cool cat. He doesn't have to prove to the world that he's a great troll. He just has to ask himself the question. No one in the world knows more about what it is to build a trillion-dollar company again than this guy. The question is, does he want to do it? And knowing how he is, guess what the answer is? Of course he is. Okay, Of course he is. But he's going to go through his uh, experience of 
whatever's going to happen here with Twitter. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.